pneumonia detection using chest x-rays developed for the healthcare domain. The speakers are Mr. Sashikant and Ms. Harika. Thanks, Rajeshri. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Sashikant Adiraju. I am currently pursuing my PG program in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning from Great Learning, Hyderabad. I also have Harika, my batchmate today. So we will be talking about a, an AI solution that we have developed basically to predict the COVID positives versus negatives. So before I go any, any further into the details, uh, let me set the context here. Um, three fundamental questions. Why, what, and how? Okay, so why are we doing this, first of all? So looking at the uh, global pandemic that has a huge impact on the human lives um, since, since last several months, uh, where people are losing their lives, people are losing their jobs. It is having a devastating effect on the human uh, life already. Uh, there are, you know, frontline healthcare community workers. They are very, very busy in, in identifying various solutions to minimize this impact and working feverishly day in and day out uh, to, to prevent or to minimize this impact. On the other hand, there is a different set of people who are also busy uh, in the form of data science community. So they are looking at various innovative solutions, various uh, technology related solutions, basically to assist the frontline healthcare community with their solutions. So that is why we wanted to do this project basically uh, to help those uh, you know, healthcare community people who are on the front line. Then coming to the what part, what we need to do here, right? Uh, as a responsible citizen and also as a data science student, we would like to you know, find an innovative way or we, we wanted to do some technology, we want to offer a technology help to the healthcare community um, with artificial intelligence and machine learning. That is why we wanted to do this project. So that is the, that is the basis of our problem statement, right? Then what are the benefits of doing this? So definitely it is going to offer a huge productivity benefit in terms of assisting the personnel who are, you know, uh, busy in screening the COVID patients, etc., huge productivity benefit. And at the same time, it is also help. It is also going to help them in terms of detecting this with much more accuracy. I think those are the two primary goals when we when we thought about what to do in this project. Now, um, coming to the how part of it, right? How to do it. So I may be going into the implementation details slowly, and I'll also be going into the technical details as we walk through. Uh, we started this project sometime in uh, mid-March this year. So during, the, during that time, this global pandemic was spreading its wings across the globe and all that, right? Um, so there were so many approaches people were taking at that time. Um, one of those approaches was uh, rapid testing, okay? Uh, it was just getting introduced at the time. Uh, if I take India as an example, uh, most of the states have reported back saying that uh, they were not so happy with the rapid testing because the uh, test results varies hugely, okay? Then immediately the Indian Council of Medical Research uh, issued a public um, guideline asking the states to stop using rapid testing until it is further, it is thoroughly tested. That inspired us to look at uh, alternate approaches what people were taking across the globe. Um, as we have seen in most of the countries, uh, people were using the chest x-rays as a screening method, which not only a cost effective solution, but is also a proven methodology, uh, especially uh, in treating the, you know, patients for their chest X-ray images. Then we started this project with a very big challenge. So the challenge is in the form of very limited availability of COVID chest X-rays at that point of time. 
So to mitigate that problem, what we have done is uh, we have also taken a huge amount of pneumonia chest X-rays, which were publicly available from NIH, National Institute of Health Clinical Center. So we combined these three uh, data sets into one, which is the basis for our uh, implementation. And uh, we then we need to look at the models, how to build a model and all that, right? So we were looking at various models and um, then uh, we have chosen some of the very well-known models that are already out there uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from the industry. So before getting into that, uh, at a very high level, we have a set of chest X-rays combined, you know, with pneumonia, COVID and healthy chest X-ray images of the patients. Um, this is the very high level classification. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, the immediate benefits are a huge productivity improvement and uh, with much more accuracy, right? Um, so we started this project, um, which I think these steps are pretty common for any data science project, um, data pre-processing and you know, feature extraction and selecting the best model that suits this problem statement. And finally, classifying these images into those three different classes, checking the class level accuracies for each of those classes, and finally coming out saying, okay, this is a COVID-19 positive versus this is a COVID-19 negative a very high level process map, right? Um, then um, the training side of it. So uh, as I said, we combined uh, NIH pneumonia images with the COVID-19 uh, images from COVID-net into one data set. And we trained our model on around 13,500 images uh, to make sure it generalized well in predicting um, on the validation data set. So standard steps here, uh, we analyzed the data, we understood the data before uh, we normalized the data on the images and we applied some very basic data augmentation techniques, which I'm going to show you in next uh, page. Uh, and then making these images uh, processed by the selected algorithm as, pa as part of its requirement in terms of the size of the image. And finally, checking the accuracy scores of these models. And uh, when, we, when we are going to put this into production, obviously we will be collecting a lot of chest X-rays from the patients. And then uh, we are giving that, you know, those X-rays to this model, which is going to predict uh, the correct, you know, class or correct uh, type of the chest X-ray for that patient. So here, um, very, very simple, very basic data augmentation techniques, which we have used basically for the standardization purposes, uh, like image rotations, shifting the images, adjusting the height of the images, setting the size of the image, et cetera, um, uh, you know, for our model. Now the model selection. So which model to select for this type of uh, problem, right? Um, we, we have chosen two of the very well-known models uh, from the you know, Keras library. One is the VGG16, uh, which is a classic model where you know, people have used it extensively on image classification. Uh, as the name suggests, it, it is a 16 weight uh, you know, uh, model that has 13 convolution layers, five max pooling layers, and three dense layers. So we, we pre-processed our data using the image data generator uh, class uh, where we applied VGG16 uh, later on. And on the right hand side of this page, you can see uh, an Inception V3 architecture. Inception V3 is from Google. Um, this is a 42 layer deep uh, convolution neural network. And we applied our data set on both these models for, for some comparison purposes. So here is a quick comparison between these two models. On the left hand side, you can see VGG16. Um, if you look at the uh, confusion matrix and the classification report, uh, you, can, you can observe that you know, the precision on COVID-19 images was 95% when we used VGG16. Um, and the test level accuracy is also I'm going to show in the next page. On the inception V3 side, you can see the precision uh, for COVID-19 is around 92%. Um, quick quick uh, analysis on the cost benefit here. So as I said, uh, 
what is the purpose of doing it? What are the benefits of doing it, right? So we try to come up with an analogy, just a quick analogy to, to, to understand how this is going to benefit from the business perspective. So first of all, um, as we already uh, understood so far, this is going to be an effective approach that is definitely going to assist the healthcare community to a larger extent. Okay, um, let us imagine a scenario where a resident uh, radiologist, okay, whose job is to collect all these chest X-rays, analyze them, and then finally, you know, saying, okay, these are the COVID images, these are the uh, pneumonia images, and these are the healthy chest X-rays, etc. So, if an expert radiologist is spending ten hours per day, uh, each hour he could able to process thousand, uh, sorry, hundred X-rays which means in a given day, he can do 1,000 x-rays uh, in a day, right? So on an annual basis in, in, in one year, uh, which means if you could translate this into the, um, into the monetary side of it, it is going to cost around 36,500. This is just rough calculation on the lower side, of course. Uh, so imagine you have thousands of chest x-rays where, uh, they need to be screened by a person, you know, uh, every day. It is going to take a lot of his time, and at the same time, is going to incur a lot of operational cost here. So the machine learning algorithm that we have built is going to help this person, help this radiologist to a greater extent. So he can just spend a very little time to to further, you know, finalize. Uh, the output, but it is it is going to help him a lot in terms of doing this screening. So we call our model as COVIDX19 Net, which is a AI product. Um, you know the expectation is uh, this is going to help you know ramping up the testing by four to five times uh, when compared to you know everything is being done by a human with, with a lot of manual uh, checks. So um, the accuracy that we arrived at is 95 percent of our model. Um, since this is related to healthcare industry, um, accuracy is of utmost important, right? Uh, so 95% in general is a very good accuracy, but is it acceptable accuracy is something uh, has to be, you know, uh, coordinated or has to be agreed with the healthcare domain expert uh, before we finally, you know, take, take this into consideration. So huge productivity benefit, and lower operating cost is the key takeaway from this. Um, just to further go on from the comparison standpoint, you can see here VGG16 and Inception V3 quick check. So VGG16 has 138 million para parameters. So which means the computing times are, are more. So when we are running a model using VGG16, um, it took a lot of time when we did the same with Inception V3. Okay, that is one finding we had when we were comparing these two models. And looking at the accuracy, VGG16 has given 95% accuracy versus Inception V3, which was coming close to that, but 94.09. So here is the trade-off, right? Uh, accuracy or computing time. Since this is related to healthcare and uh, has a direct impact on the human life, Accuracy may take precedence over computing time. Again, uh, this needs to be in consultation with the healthcare experts before finally choosing what model fits fits them best. So that's the trade off. Okay, so with that, um, I will ask Harika, my batchmate, who is going to show you a demo notebook, which we have prepared for this demo. So in this demo, what we are going to show you is we give an image to the to the model and it is going to show you whether it is a COVID image or pneumonia image or a normal image. So with that, I will ask Harika to quickly take it over from me. Thank you, Shashi. So good afternoon to all attendees of the session. I am Harika. As a part of great learning, I have joined AIML August batch, AIML course August batch. So currently I am a student of uh, Usmania University pursuing Master of Technology from Computer Science Department. Coming to this uh, demo, so this is a notebook uh, showing how our model is predicting uh, chest X-ray images, whether it belongs to COVID-19 or uh, pneumonia or uh, healthy. 
So this is a data set of all the classes of images followed by the class labels. Let's quickly run this code. Let's see how our model is predicting when we give a, a chest X-ray as an input. So I'm randomly selecting an image as an input to this model. And uh, let's see how our model is predicting pretty good. So you can see the result of this model. So this is an image what we have chosen. On the top of it, you can see the class label predicted by our model. So let's check with by taking an other example. So let's quickly run this code again. And uh, I am randomly selecting another image from my data set and uh, see how our model is predicting uh, for this image. So you can see the image here. So this image is what we have chosen from the data set. And uh, this on the top of it, you can see the class label perfectly predicted by our model. So but let me clarify one thing here. We are feeding only the images as an input to the model. And uh, uh, this class, the purpose of class label in this uh, data set is, on, is to only check whether our model is predicting perfectly or not. So this model gives very uh, quite promising results when we compare with the uh, previous studies in this uh, same area. So we can say that this model uh, is a fastest screening artificial intelligence system, which allows the user to get uh, self-quarantine as soon as possible and take care about his health. I hope this model would uh, would give a helping hand to our nation to fight against with the COVID war and uh, uh, to avoid the fastly spreading of this virus. So thank you so much uh, for giving this opportunity. If you have any questions on our presentations, you're free to ask. So, all right, that's, that's it from, from this uh, team um, on COVID X images uh, versus pneumonia X Im pneumonia images from the given data set. So, please uh, start asking your questions and we are there to answer them. Answer. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, team. Uh, we'll now take up some questions asked by the audience. Uh, so, the first question is from Devang Kamdar. Uh, please give a little background and how did you collaborate on the project and divided your work and uh, who did what part of the project? Excellent question. So um, the background, as I said, is uh, we wanted to help. We wanted to offer a technology help to the frontline healthcare community. That was the background. That is why we have done this project. And um, to, to manage this between the team members, the way we have done is... Uh, we have the team members who were working on the same problem statement, trying different models. So initially, we spent a lot of time in uh, in understanding the data, uh, where you know the data was very limited to start with. So we we combined the data sets, we created our own data set, understood it. Uh, I think that was the basis for this project. Then the model selection. So. One of us have, you know, taken that initiative to look at what are the available models, which one suits best for the CPAs classification, because this is a classic multi-class classification problem. So there are various approaches. People have tried different models, etc. Uh, but we wanted to go with some of the uh, very well-known models, you know, which worked pretty well in this segment. Um, so one of us tried VGC16, for example. The other member has tried Inception V3. So that was our approach in terms of splitting the work. It's not like one person has done only the data preparation, the other person has uh, selected the model, nothing like that. We, we all did research initially. We all understood the data. We all built the, um, you know, data set ourselves. Then, uh, you know, we took different approaches in terms of uh, running the different models on the same data set. Hope that answers your question. Okay. Uh, moving to the next question, it's from Shardul Sate. Uh, can you talk about the hardware that you use for training the model? Okay. So we used the Google Collab. Um, you know, for this model, uh, because we are not deploying this yet into the production environment, right? So we used Google Collab um, for both VGC 16 and uh, uh, Inception V3, the GPU. 
Okay. Um, the next question is from Arunav Basu. What are the pre-processing steps that have been applied on the chest X-ray? Harika, you want to take that question? Yeah, yes. So the pre-processing steps uh, is applied is uh, resizing of an image and uh, uh, and normalization of an image according to the model requirement. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the next question comes from Anubhav Karelia. Uh, the question is, there must be class imbalance problem you face. What about checking for the precision and recall, especially recall as it is very important in medical scenario? Excellent question. I like it. Um, you know, I forgot to mention about this challenge we face. Of course, the first challenge was the limited data available, I already mentioned. But when we started the implementation, the other biggest challenge came in the form of imbalanced data. So the COVID-19 images were very minimal compared to pneumonia images, which were too many. So how to, how to balance this, right? So we applied a technique called assigning class weights uh, for these three different classes, uh, which which actually solved this problem of imbalanced data sets, which, as you said, very important in the healthcare industry to come up with, with correct recall values and all. Thanks for that question. Okay. We have some more questions. So the next one is from Bihari Gandhakota. Looks like COVID X19 net is a retrained VGG16 on X ray images and not a custom arc, or is it? You, you got it correct. So we, we just named our baby as COVID X net, but uh, to your point, yes, it is uh, basically we leveraged the VGG 16 or Inception V3, uh, those pre-trained models uh, to do this predictive analytics. But yes, just, just the name of our baby. Okay, so we have the last question from Vedha Nayagam. Where did you find all COVID X-ray images? Are public images available for all? Um, we we leveraged COVID net. I think Linda Wang or somebody. I, I basically we found an article in Kaggle um, at the time. You know, some people were doing research on a similar problem. In fact, they built their custom model. Uh, unlike our COVID X net, uh, they they had their own custom model called COVID net. So for that model building, um, they gathered some of the publicly available COVID chest X-rays. Uh, from the from the globe, uh, we used their images uh, for our for creating our data set, and we combined it with you know another big set of pneumonia images from NIH. Thanks for the question. Thank you, team. Uh, we are soon starting with our next presentation on IPL cricket match outcome prediction using AI techniques. Requesting you all to kindly join the same using the YouTube link share. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.